awareness out there for people to understand that electromagnetic pulse or EMP is a very real and very devastating weapon that is planned to be used against the United States. Um, unfortunately, this is very sad, but a lot of people, they may have seen uh, the terminology electromagnetic pulse or EMP in a movie or in a science fiction book. And although it sounds good in the book, believe maybe they think that it's not real. And I'm here to highlight that this is an incredibly devastating weapon, that there is plans to be using these weapons against America. Um, in fact, this is such a seriously devastating weapon and such a real weapon um, that the Department of Homeland Security, Security projects that one, uh, only uh, one out of every nine people one year after an EMP will still be alive, primarily due to a lack of running water and a lack of access to food, among a myriad of other things, which I'm sure we're going to discuss here in a little bit. Um, an EMP weapon is, is something that uh, is basically uh, created by a nuclear weapon going off in the atmosphere. Um, although there is many other ways to do it to include ground level uh, methods, um, but primarily um, the, the most devastating effect would be created by a nuclear weapon going off in the atmosphere. And the effects of it would reach up into Canada, all the way down into the northern portion of Mexico. That's how large this could be if it's detonated at around 300 miles above the earth. Uh, and if it's okay with you, Stan, what I'd, what I'd kind of like to do is, um, I'll explain generally how an EMP works, if that's okay, so that people absolutely, understand absolutely. how it would work. And then I'll kind of explain a little bit about the effects and um, a little bit about how serious this is and why the government's involved in it. So when you're talking about a high altitude nuclear EMP, which is referred to as hemp, the way it would work is that one of our adversaries, Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, any one of them would basically detonate a nuclear weapon above the atmosphere. And they say that we believe that the height is around 300 miles to give it that um, range that I just described. And so it could be done by launching a, uh, a rocket into space at 300 miles from Russia, from Venezuela. It could also be launched from a satellite or even some of these new hypersonic weapons platforms that we know Russia, China, and now North Korea are now testing and can release a payload of a nuclear weapon. And so what happens is when that nuclear weapon goes off in the atmosphere, it actually goes out in all directions. So it's pushing outwards into space it's also pushing downwards towards the earth. And what's happening is uh, and there's three phases. And during the first two phases, the gamma radiation and the matter from that blast are passing through the atmosphere as it's heading downwards towards the earth. And the, when the gamma radiation first passes through the atmosphere, it kicks off freed electrons. And they're, they're basically going down at roughly the speed of light and inducing into everything at the ground level of the earth. In fact, um, just a regular nuclear weapon would create around 50,000 volts per square meter, which is a tremendous amount of energy. And this occurs in the first two phases, first from that gamma radiation, which is very fast from that nuclear blast going off. And then secondly, from the matter that follows that gamma radiation down towards the earth in a second wave, um, which is the second wave is still a very high amount of energy, which is kind of almost like a huge amount of almost like an, a lightning bolt, which is then gonna strike simultaneously across the United States. What's important to highlight here in these first two phases is this is where everything that has microelectronics, transistors, resistors, diodes, microprocessors, anything with silicone arsenide is all going to be destroyed or almost all going to be destroyed from this, these pulses that come down and induce into everything that's a conductor. And so what does that mean? That means that modern day vehicles are no longer going to function. You're not going to be able to live your daily life and go from point A to point B. That means that communication systems across the United States, like cell phone towers, um, your cell phone itself, your computer, it's all going to be destroyed. During these first two phases, things in the grid are also going to be destroyed. Um, so the control systems of nuclear power plants and other a myriad of different things that do have these transistors, resistors, diodes, and other things like silicon arsenide will all be destroyed. Um, your way of life as you know it will be completely changed forever. And that's the first two phases. There's also a third phase to EMP, which is when that blast, like I explained, goes outwards into space. And so around the Earth, we have the magnetosphere. And when that blast goes outwards, it actually pushes on the magnetosphere, which causes it to fluctuate because it's trying to get back to that normal shape around the Earth. And the magnetosphere is important. Obviously, it protects us from things in space and many other things. But what's happening is as it's fluctuating, it's actually creating a low and slow charge at the ground level of the Earth. And this is the third phase of an EMP. Generally, this is where the grid is going to be affected if it was not already destroyed from the E1 or the E2. This E3 portion, third phase, the grid, which is miles, 10 miles, hundreds of miles long because of the length and the size is, in, is capable of inducing this low and slow charge, which is building over time. So at an hour, it's starting to build. 
at a couple hours and several hours later, it's reaching a level of charge, which is detrimental to the grid. Um, and so basically what's happening is at a certain duration of time when that charge is met and it's a, it's a dangerous level, portions of the grid are then being destroyed. Um, you've got uh, portions of substations, which are not meant to handle that are then destroyed transformers and many other critical things inside the grid are then destroyed. And what this means is uh, you no longer have energy going into your house on top of the fact that you no longer have any devices or the majority of them that have microelectronics are then destroyed. So this is a highly devastating weapon. It's important to understand that the EMP itself is so high, you're probably not going to see it. It's 300 miles above the earth. To give you an idea, that's roughly the height of the International Space Station. So this nuclear weapon is going to go off. You're probably not even going to see it. You're not going to have any warning because it happens immediately. And then after it goes off, your way of life, as you know, it changes. This is not to scare you, but it is to let you understand that this is a very real event, that there's, the weapons already exist. In fact, they've been around since the 1960s, since uh, it was actually discovered in 1962 during an Operation Starfish Prime, which was run by the United States military. And uh, the other thing to understand about an EMP is the effects of an EMP, so that that energy coming down towards the earth from the EMP is not going to, it's not going to physically hurt you. And, and in any way it's going to destroy electronics. So the reality of this is, and this is why our adversaries almost prefer to use these types of weapons is because they feel their people would feel better about using them also, not only because there's mass chaos and mass devastation, but also because there's no initial loss of life, but that's not to say there isn't loss of life because we know that up to 90% of the population or even more will potentially be dead after an EMP because you are no longer going to have running water. You're no longer going to have access to food. You're no longer going to have the ability to have logistics and things transported from point A to point B because all of the vehicles on the road are destroyed. And this is very important to know um, because your way of life is going to completely change. There's no more using your cell phone. There's no longer a World Wide Web. Your computers don't even work, let alone the Internet itself. Uh, and so, Stan, that's that's kind of a very general overview of an EMP. And um, yes, sir.